As discussed in the previous video, a net torque on the rotor of a single phase motor is created by a starting winding partially canceling the magnetic field of one or more of the rotating stator fields and adding to the others. In a split phase motor, the starting winding wires have lower resistance and inductance than the wires of the stator windings. This difference in wire properties creates the necessary differential and magnetic flux between the starting and stator windings. A centrifugal switch automatically disengages the starting winding once the motor reaches operating speed. Typical split phase motors used in consumer products range in power from a 20th to a third of a horsepower. That's 40 watts to 250 watts for those who prefer metric units. They're commonly found in fans, blowers, or electric lawn mowers. In the split phase motor I'm about to show you, the dimensional differences between the starting and stator windings are quite visible. The split phase motor in this slide was pulled out of a very old broken down clothing dryer. One of the students in a machine design class I teach on campus gave it to me as a present. Now normally I wouldn't get excited much about receiving a beaten up motor for a present. It's not something I would buy in a high-end department store or online from the Sharper Image website and I certainly wouldn't give it to my wife for a birthday present. At best, she would use it as a paperweight. At worst, she would throw it at me. But I really appreciated this present. It allowed me to explain more about split phase motors to my class, and now I'm going to explain it to you. The first thing you should note is that the motor label identifies the main properties of the motor. This one is quarter horsepower, which is 190 watts and runs at 1725 RPM. The corresponding synchronous speed is 1800 RPM, as this motor operates at 115 volts, 60 hertz, single phase AC power, and has four pole pairs. The slip is calculated at 4.2%, typical of this type of a split phase motor. The motor frame is square. I will sit it on the table on its various sides so you can see the parts better. You can see the bare copper wire of the main stator windings on either side of a large laminated iron core. This iron core concentrates the magnetic field generated by the windings. Cooling fan blades are attached to the rotor, circulating ambient air to keep the stator windings from overheating. Rotating the motor 90 degrees on the table allows you to peek deep into the interior of the motor and see the starting windings deep inside. The starting windings appear to be about half the thickness of the stator windings. The length of the starting windings is also much less than that of the stator windings. This motor transmitted power on both ends of the motor shaft. The left end had a drive belt attached to it and the right end had a pulley attached. Looking axially into the motor, you can see the squirrel cage rotor underneath the motor frame. This frame is riveted together, so I won't be able to take this motor apart much further. Flipping the motor around on its back reveals the main label mandated by Underwriters Lab. This label shows the motor design data discussed before, the motor serial number, a safety warning, and the serial number of the motor from the motor manufacturer. It also clearly specifies that it is a motor designed for a clothes dryer. The thick gray Red and orange wires connect external AC power to the coil windings. This close-up of the motor reveals the centrifugal switch mechanism. At rest, the gray levers shown in the closed position press against the brown-colored non-conductive plate. Keeping the plate in the closed position allows a set of internal contacts to transmit power to the starting winding. As the motor accelerates, the centrifugal force on the levers acts to push the non-conductive plate to the right, relieving pressure on the contacts. As the split phase motor approaches its operating speed of 1725 RPM, the force from the extension spring is not enough to keep the plate in the closed position. The plate moves to the right and the contacts open. As long as the motor runs at operating speed, the contacts remain open and the starting winding remains disengaged from the circuit. And now it's time for something completely different. We're going to ditch the slides and go live with the webcam on my computer. 
and so much for orchestrated scripts. I'm going random. I'm going to rip this script up and be done with it. You will see mostly close-ups of my hands. No need to see the rest of me. You already know what I look like anyway. Now we're live with our split phase motor and we can do a more random tour of it. First thing I want to do is actually show you the rotation because you can't do that with slides. So I'm rotating one end of the shaft, the one that was attached to the belt. You can see the other end of the shaft rotating. You can see these fins here as they rotate. And you can see where I'm putting my screwdriver right down in there. That's our whole centrifugal switch mechanism. There's the spring, the white lever. Right here we've got our stator windings. Those are the big thick ones. And then right down in here, attached to these little small plastic insulators, right down in there, that's what I was talking about, the starting windings. You've got starting windings here, a couple of starting windings on the other side, and actually on all four sides of the motor, you're able to see uh, the starting windings. Now we're going to demonstrate how the centrifugal switch actually works mechanically so give me a moment to get my screwdriver in there and I'm actually going to force it open now you can see the actual mechanism this brown disc moving to the right and you can see the spring resisting that force and once I do this the contacts inside will be open and the starting windings will be out of the circuit. You can also see here there's a couple of levers I was talking about before are the ones that eventually will uh, switch the uh, force over to the right and overcome that uh, coil spring which is right here. If I switch the motor over now you get a nice view of the warning label and you can also see these enormous uh, power lines coming in. There's the red one, the orange one, the gray one. There's the smaller black ground. There's your heavy duty contacts here for bringing in uh, power from the, the outside. Again, you can actually see the rotation. It's a pretty symmetric motor. Looking around at uh, all four sides, you're going to see similar kinds of views. Now I've rotated the motor so that we're peering down an axial end and I'll actually rotate the shaft for you and now the black part is the cooling fan but that silver colored piece is actually part of the rotor. You see here I'll point it out with my screwdriver these are windings and right back here see this fin right there those pointed protrusions coming out are part of the rotor and if I rotate the motor some more now you got a real nice view of it what the rotor looks like and you can see how the rotor is actually moving inside the stator windings and then of course like any good clothing dryer motor you got some dust after 30 years, even though I cleaned this motor as best as I could, there's lint everywhere. Hope you enjoyed the tour.